Today we're dining at a World Showcase restaurant so popular they built an entire country in Europe based off of its theming. Hope you packed your lederhosen, cause this one's the schnitzel. That's right, we're eating at Beer Garden at the Germany Pavilion. Not only are we covering Beer Garden Restaurant here in this video, but also there is so much more Epcot news that got dumped this week that we cannot wait to tell you about later on in this video. When I tell you I've been to the Beer Garden a few times before, what I really mean is I've been to the Beer Garden literally 10 to 15 times before, and here's why. Growing up, Beer Garden was always our go-to restaurant, mainly because a lot of these trips growing up, I'd be taking with extended family, not just our immediate mom, dad, my brothers, my sister, obviously, but also my grandfather, who was literally born in Germany. And wanting to make him feel like he's at home, we would always stop here at the Beer Garden at Germany. Growing up, my family would take trips every other year for the first 20 or so years of my life. If you do the math there, I've been to Beer Garden over 10 times, even before I moved here to Orlando. Well, I must have missed some of those family trips with Ryan. It's weird how that works, you know, since he's my brother, but I just must have missed all those trips to the beer garden. But I have still been plenty of times as an adult since I've lived here. And I've got to say, the beer garden is actually one of my favorite restaurants in Epcot. It's it's definitely up there. If you can't tell, I wore my German best today. Um, this is a very stylish Roosevelt after Captain America. And it's German because I believe he fought the Germans in the first movie, the bad guys, the German bad guys. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> One of the major draws to the Germany Pavilion restaurant here, the Beer Garden, is the fact that they have live entertainment during your like buffet dining experience. This is something Disney was looking to bring to Epcot since the very beginning of World Showcase, and I believe it's probably one of the only restaurants at all of World Showcase that actually has maintained the same like goal of entertainment and the authentic food from that original country. And although this is not a character dining experience like I prefer while eating here at Disney World, I feel like we could get some some decent character interactions if we if we cheer loud enough today. Kristen, that should be us right now. Why are we not participating? You go ahead up there and then I'll join you once you start dancing. If you know me, you know how terrified I can be of Disney buffets, mainly because I've been food poisoned by buffets in general a few times and Disney buffets once or twice. But for the most part, German food is pretty like overcooked, I believe. So like, I'm not, uh, I'm not too worried. For my first trip up to the buffet, I ended up going with this mac and cheese casserole type thing, which looks absolutely delicious. One of my all-time favorites, the potato pancakes, as well as an assortment of meats, which would be the chicken schnitzel, meatballs, and then this other like pork thing, which I'm not 100% sure of what this was. I, I forgot to get a clip of the sign. And applesauce. Yes, applesauce. <laughs> I've been to the real Germany before, like the actual country itself, albeit like when I was in seventh grade. So it's been quite a bit of time. I can tell you one thing, and that's this restaurant here is not really based off of modern Germany whatsoever. It's based off of this like, you know how Disney does it, this like Main Street USA idealized America, but like now Germany. The interior is based off of a Southern Germany location in Bavaria that's called Insert down, Ryan, insert it here because I forgot off the top of my head and the band's about to start, so I gotta be pretty quick. Other things that you'll see here at the Beer Garden is it's very reminiscent of a very popular restaurant all throughout Germany and globally because they have locations elsewhere, and you can tell from this menu. This is a uh, pattern design that you'll see at the Hofber House. Has anyone heard of the Hofber House? It's a very popular restaurant that's a German-based company. Um, it's basically, if you ask a German, it's the Rainforest Cafe of Germany. Uh, hint to, you know, our last Rainforest Cafe video, but also um, it's very much the like kitschy, like, oh, this is what we do. It's like basically if you go to an American restaurant, it's like, look, there's a cowboy here, and there's a, like, that's basically what this is, and I guess this is more authentic than Hofbrauhaus, House, but just wanted to mention that because I know a lot of people will draw, you know, the lines between those two, and obviously entertainment is very similar as well. You definitely just caught me in the most unflattering position ever. Kristen, how much German do you speak? A whole lot. Say it, say that in German. A whole lot. A whole lot. <laughs> that was definitely like, that sounded Canadian, I feel like. <laughs> Throughout high school and college, I took a total of four years of German. Guess how much I remember? I can't, I'm holding, hold on. Null, I think is a word for zero in German, I think. N-U-L-L, -L, maybe. You don't know this? I mean, I do, I don't. <laughs> 
my second plate of food here from the buffet, I ended up going with some spatzel this time because how could I have missed that on the first try? I had to go back for the meatballs. I had some potato salad, like warm German potato salad, some green beans, as well as traditional bratwurst. One other thing I forgot to mention about the theming inside this building itself is something that they don't have at a lot of other World Showcase restaurants, and that is flags representing different cities around the country that we are in, which is Germany right now. Naturally, these Floridian tourists are not going to know the exact cities that these individual flags are coming from, so of course they have the name tags right above them. One flag in particular I always try pointing out because that is the home city flag of my family, like literally where they come from, which our is- Our family. Our family, sorry. Berlin, Germany. And honestly, it's probably the easiest to remember because it's just like a white stripe, two red stripes, and a black bear. Do you see where that is, Kristen? Do you recognize our- Our heritage. Do you, rec <laughs> do you recognize our family flag, I guess? Mm -hmm. That's our heritage. Proud to be from Berlin, Germany. One major draw to Beer Garden here at the Germany Pavilion is the entertainment itself, which I touched upon a little bit before, but let me just reiterate, this is not just a regular, what they would refer to as an oompa pa band or a polka band. Do you know about this? You don't know about any of these? Okay. <laughs> But also each of the musicians in the band have their own like one-off like solo section. It, this would go from anything from a glockenspiel solo to a like table of little bells, which is something that honestly I feel like is one of the most impressive out of anything. At literally any music performance I've ever seen at a Disney park. How could you remember? I mean, there's probably notes listed on the top of which notes are which, but as well as these two massive mountain horns, which while they were playing it, I just kept coughing. You know, it just made me feel like I needed a Ricola. You know what I mean? No? No? One disappointing part about the whole performance is that Kristen would not get up and dance. Why not? I am not a dancer. Like, I will... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you are. I will, you will never see me dancing unless I am very, very intoxicated. Um, that is the only time I will bust a little move. But other than that... Uh, it ain't happening. My 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 buns are staying in the seat. But who am I to say my pretzel buns did not move whatsoever either? I just um we're not today. Maybe another day. Maybe next time. Of course, I had to make one more trip up to the buffet for a German delight. Actually, two different German delights this time. I ended up going with the classic, the classic apple strudel with vanilla sauce, as well as the most authentic German dessert to ever exist, according to Kristen. She'll explain really quick what she's talking about. Is that okay? So here at the Kingdom Crew, we love a good German delight, or a German dessert, if you will. Uh, the classic German brownie from the beer garden is one of our favorite German delights, and I told Ryan it is so good here that he has to try it. Here he goes to take a bite, a little bite of that pretzel in with it, a little bit of the salty with the sweet. It's nice and fudgy. He is loving it. Oh, he, he's lying, he's lying. Don't listen wow. to him. And after a single bite of the apple strudel, let me tell you, this is literally a thousand times better than this very cold grocery store brownie that for some reason Kristen thinks is amazing. Yeah, don't don't bother listening to her. The beer garden restaurant here in Germany at Epcot will run you $49 for adults and $27 for children. Now that is before tax and gratuity. One more thing you should keep in mind is that they do only do lunch and dinner here. They unfortunately do not have any breakfast spatzel on the menu. If you're wondering at what the best time during the day to visit the beer garden at Epcot is, I would say in between 2.30 and 4. Almost the entire time that we've been here, pretty much only half of the restaurant has been full. It's been pretty chill for the most part, and I would highly suggest going for like early mid to afternoon uh, dining, especially during these summer months that are coming up. It's going to be scorching hot, and it's actually fairly cold in here. 
Okay, now Ryan is saying he wants to play Guess That Price in the crystal shop. Um, and I already know as soon as I'm like just standing here at the entrance, I know exactly what he wants to play Guess That Price with. Do you know the price of it? <laughs> no, I don't. There's okay. one item. Too. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to walk backwards to it so don't that I don't look anything. at it. I'm not going to run into anyone. I'm looking over my shoulder, but I don't want to get a sneak peek. This is a very expensive shop to be walking backwards. <laughs> So right as I'm like sneakily trying to see what the price is, this woman walks by and goes, $75,000, that's too much. <laughs> well, that kind of ruined it. Well, I'm going to... That was way over my guess. Mine was going to be $17,000. <laughs> okay. I would have lost anyway, so... <laughs> okay. Now that we're done over at Beer Garden, I wanted to make my way over to the front of the park to kind of cover some of the brand new Epcot things that got dumped this week. Kristen really loves when I have been saying dumped, so just a big dump of Epcot news. Dump. Dump. Behind me right now sits Communicore Hall and Plaza, which officially is opening on June 10th, and I cannot wait. The transformation of this part of Epcot has taken almost five years to happen, and I know that's quite a bit of time, but at this point, it's really par for the course for Disney's construction projects, and it's finally, finally happening. Disney has officially announced now that this new area of the park will be home to a brand new Mickey and Friends meet and greet space. As of right now, we do not know who these friends will be per se, but speculation says it might not be the original like set Disney Fab Five. In fact, a lot of these characters were meant to be meet and greets over at the now canceled play pavilion that might end up happening there, maybe not, but at least from what I've heard, they're supposed to be over here at the new Mickey and Friends meet and greet. Some of these possible characters are Baymax, Wreck-It Ralph, Vanellope, Wally, and more. Now, you can expect to possibly see these. I do not know for sure. This is just what I've been hearing. And also keep in mind, this brand new concept art for the space does make it very, very flexible on who could be in and out of there because it's not just like a big name tag like Goofy Circus that you would find elsewhere or like Donald's little nest corner or whatever. I don't know, but it could definitely be swapped in and out. And there's also a giant like figment statue in this concept art as well, which I'm really confused by. Maybe originally they were supposed to have him there. Maybe they're moving figment and they're refurbing figment. <gasps> That's not been announced yet. We'll see come D23. One other big part of this announcement is this planned stage concert venue area, which we have touched upon in videos in the past. Now, one really, really disappointing part about this announcement is that this is not going to, at first, be a concert venue. Why, you ask? Well, because Disney thought it would be a great idea from June 10th, opening day, all the way till September, to debut a new Encanto show. Now this Encanto show, based off of the concept art, looks extremely sad community theater. Based off of first glances at this concept art, it looks very, very much stripped back. It literally just looks like there's two characters in the stage with a bunch of, you know, other cast members asking the audience to clap along. And I just don't, I don't know why this is the first thing that's going here. Um, but knowing Disney's track record as well, this will probably end up staying here for five years. Um, again, I'm not the biggest fan of Encanto. I know the reach that it has and the amount of kids that love it, but also, if it's on this scale, why not make it a little, like, fun corner somewhere else? Not this massive, brand new facility that they have set up that is not themed to Encanto whatsoever, but Disney's gonna do what Disney wants to do. Okay, so I personally did see the concept art, of course, and I've gotta say, I don't think I could be less excited for something <laughs> like it, the concept art. I mean, it does not look good. Um, like Ryan said, like they're debuting this whole new building. I feel like they should have something like elaborate and crazy in there. And it seems like kind of something that they just threw together last minute because they needed something to put in that building. That's what I'm getting from the concept art. We'll see if that is true once it actually opens. Aside from the officially announced new things coming to Epcot, there's also some more rumors circulating around around when the actual change to Test Track will be happening, which Disney did announce was happening. They just don't have actual down dates yet, but it might end up closing sooner than everyone is expecting. Back in November of 2023 at Disney's Destination D event, Disney announced that the Test Track ride would be going down sometime in the near future for a very well-deserved refurbishment. This refurbishment would see a slight retheme to the Test Track ride itself and pulling back a lot of the themes from the original attraction, which is World of Motion. As of right now, there is some speculation that this change will be happening as soon as July this year. I know that sounds very soon. I know a lot of people who may have their vacations booked might be saying, wait, I can't ride Test Track on my vacation. Well, unfortunately, at this point, it looks like J July very well may be the time where this goes down for that major change, which could, which could 
could take literally over a year, maybe even two years, maybe five years, because that's what <laughs> Disney has been doing the past few years, is just taking that long to make the change. But it's very, very much needed. And I think they should also maybe change a few tires, make it a little more smooth. The brakes could use some work. If you've ever been on a test track recently, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I think this change just really has a lot to do with Tron opening at Magic Kingdom and this being faux Tron before Tron was open. And they're just saying like, okay, it's gonna happen eventually. Let's just, let's let's bite the bullet and do it now. We'll see if it happens then. I know I personally am so excited for Test Track to kind of be rethemed. Test Track used to be one of my favorite rides here, the like original version of Test Track. And since they've brought this like second version of Test Track, I just am not a fan. Last time I rode this, not a single one of the screens were working that like tell you what place your car is. And I think that's like kind of like a whole waste of time. I don't know. I think this ride desperately needs a retheme, and I am very excited for that to happen. Um, I wish it would go down tomorrow so we could get it back <laughs> sooner. <laughs> and I'm hoping this is one of those attractions that Disney kind of like rethemes fast. With like Tiana's Bayou Adventure, they got through that thing in a year, maybe a little more than a year. When did that go down? Yeah, they're already testing it. They worked on that so fast. So hopefully with Test Track, they could take like a year and it'll be done quick, just like Tiana's. With everything new coming to Epcot this summer, I am so excited to actually have our park back to us because it's literally been under construction walls for five years at this point and I, I cannot wait. And with all that being said, thank you so, so much for watching today's video. Just so I know you made it to the very, very end of the video, what World Showcase restaurant do you wanna see us dine at next? We've already hit so, so many on Kristen's series of hitting every World Showcase restaurant over the next year. And if you wanna see that whole series, right in the corner you can find a playlist for all of her videos in that series. Let me know where you wanna see a review to next. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be the lucky one to guess right, okay. Thanks to all the pity viewers. I will see you guys real, real soon. Thanks. Bye.